beta blockers are used in a variety of cardiac conditions, including angina, arrhythmias, and stable heart failure. Today we will be focusing on the use of these drugs in the management of hypertension. A beta blocker is a drug that acts on beta adrenoceptors by blocking sympathetic nerve stimulation caused by epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. There are two main types of beta receptors. Beta 1 receptors are mainly in the heart and kidneys and beta 2 receptors in the lungs, blood vessels and smooth muscles of organs. Beta blockers can be selective or non-selective. Non-selective blockers work at both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Selective blockers only work at beta 1 receptors. Beta blockers are generally the last medication to be prescribed. They are used with other medications such as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and only when other medications such as diuretics or calcium channel blockers have not been effective. Despite this, the use of beta blockers in the treatment of hypertension are increasingly common. However, the specifics in the mechanism of action of beta blockers in lowering bl blood pressure is still unclear. One of the many ways that the human body regulates blood pressure is through the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system which not only regulates blood pressure, but also regulates fluid and electrolyte balance. In the kidneys, beta-1 adrenoceptors are responsible for the release of renin, which regulates angiotensin II and aldosterone. The balance of angiotensin II and aldosterone is crucial in the regulation and rate of renal loss of sodium and water, and therefore the regulation of arterial pressure. Cardioselective beta blockers inhibit beta-1 adrenoceptors, preventing the release of renin from the kidneys. A decrease in circulating plasma renin triggers for a reduction in angiotensin II and aldosterone. A decrease in that balance results in an enhancement of renal sodium and water loss, thus resulting in a decreased arterial pressure. Beta receptors found in the heart are located in the sinoatrial node and in the myocardium, and they both have roles in regulating heart rate and cardiac contractility. When these receptors are stimulated by catecholamines, such as epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine, both the heart rate and strength of cardiac contractions increase. Beta blockers work to reverse this effect. By blocking the beta receptors in the sinoatrial node, the firing rate of action potentials in the heart is reduced, thus resulting in a slower heart rate. The inhibitory nature of beta blockers in the myocardium also reduces the strength at which the heart contracts, reducing the cardiac output. Both of these mechanisms are used in the regulation of blood pressure and can be manipulated through the use of beta blockers to reduce hypertension. Adverse effects of beta blockers include bronchoconstriction, exercise tolerance, atrioventricular block, claudication, and sleep disorders. Beta-2 receptors are also present in the lungs and can cause vasodilation in the bronchial smooth muscle. Beta blockers, including those that are cardioselective, can all have an effect on these receptors, which may result in the prevention of vasodilatory effects, causing bronchoconstriction to occur. And it is for this reason that beta blockers are not used in patients with asthma or any other respiratory disorder. Another adverse effect is atrioventricular block. When beta blockers are used, a decrease in conduction velocity is seen at the atrioventricular node, meaning that there is a longer delay in conduction of action potentials through the atrioventricular node and the time between atrial and ventricular contraction is increasing. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.